Hello, Trade Talks followers, and welcome to another episode. My name is Lena Faro. I'm a producer and host here at NASDAQ. Joining me right now is Perry Ann Boring, who is founder and president of the Chamber Digital of Commerce. And now that is the world's largest blockchain organ trade association in the world, again, um, to with here with some news about an acquisition. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And could you fill us in, tell us a little bit more about this acquisition? Sure. So the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we are the world's first and largest blockchain trade association. So we represent about 200 companies that are innovating and investing in the digital asset in the blockchain space. Um, just a couple weeks ago, we completed um, the first um, acquisition, um, nonprofit acquisition in the blockchain space. So we worked with the Blockchain Association of Canada, which was the longest serving blockchain trade group um, in Canada. Um, we have now combined forces and we've created the Chamber of Digital Commerce Canada. Um, so we did this for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one for global reasons, blockchain is a global technology. Many of our members have operations all over the place, outside of the United States and Canada and in other countries. Um, and this technology does not see borders. So when we think about public policy, when we think about engaging from a regulatory perspective, we need to think about it from an international perspective and that um, we will be stronger with a united vo uh, voice and a united front. Um, the second being resources. Um, it's um, uh, trade association work is not easy. Uh, blockchain uh, it, it is a very technical topic. So when we're educating policymakers and members of Congress or Parliament um, in Canada, um, it, you can't learn this in one meeting or one briefing or with a, you know a one pager. Um, it takes uh, dedicated relationships and resources. Um, and at the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we've been fortunate to grow um, a dedicated team that now um, our constituents in Canada will be able to use um, and leverage from. So we're really excited about the potential of blockchain um, in Canada. We have some great team members helping us on the ground there. Um, and uh, we're going to move this forward in the United States and Canada and globally. And that's fantastic uh, to, to hear that this acquisition is happening in Canada, which we saw comments coming in from Don Taps. Scott, who you're working very closely with, I understand, and is also executive chairman of Blockchain Research Institute, who said Canada is well positioned to become a global leader. So could you speak a little bit to the significance of what this means in terms of Canada becoming the leading voice or the leading voice helping shift uh, to that united front? Yeah, so Don um, Tapscott is a member of our board of advisors and we've been working with him in the Blockchain Research Institute for many years. It's a very strong partnership between the two of us. Um, why we're really excited about Canada is because the way in which their financial services industry is organized um, is very concise. There's a, a couple of banks that represent the mass majority of financial services activity in the country. It's also a tech forward country. Um, so there's a lot of potential uh, to bring the key stakeholders together to get them to coordinate and collaborate. And if they are able to pick something and move on it, whether it's a use case or an application um, of technology um, in the blockchain space, um, it could really change the landscape um, and put Canada on the map. Um, so it's a great testing ground. Um, it's a great place um, to, to do a coordinated effort. Um, and from our side, on working on the public policy side, um, it, it, it's a great place um, to leverage our resources, um, act locally, but think globally. That's amazing. And what feedback are you getting so far? Are you seeing positive, positive signals from the ecosystem? So because we're, um, we're both nonprofit organizations, um, part of this um, uh, deal had to be voted on by the members of the Blockchain um, Association of Canada. And that vote happened just a couple of weeks ago. Um, we prepared a proposal. Um, for the members to show them what the Chamber of Digital Commerce was going to be and what it would look like in the long run. And they all had the opportunity to vote on it and decide if they wanted to do this. And um, the outcome was unanimous. Um, every single person that voted, voted yes. Not one person voted against it. So we are walking into this um, with a, a, a broad support from the members, uh, from the stakeholders in Canada, um, and just seeing the news that we've seen um, in the media. There's a lot of people that are really excited and really understand the purpose of having dedicated advocates working with the policy community to make sure they have uh, the right tools and resources to guide them in the appropriate regulatory treatment of this technology. Great. Well, it's good to hear that stakeholders are certainly enthusiastic about this news and absolutely best of luck to you. Look forward to keeping up with more news from you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, everyone, that was Perry Ann Boring. That is 
founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Trade Talks. Stay tuned for more.